guest here. She's just something that's truly, truly, truly special in our family. She actually saved our generation because the, our older generation had the doctor, Dr. Floyd Banks, and none of us was getting it done until she came along. This young lady here, I can call her young, she's my young cousin, but she's raised herself to the upper echelon of the family by her works and her dedication. And she's just, went to old in San Francisco, star down there at, UC, at San Diego, all league basketball players. Definitely could have played in the WNBA, but she chose to go to medical school. And she had her eye on the prize. And, and this, is, this is what Alana has to look forward to. This, this, these are the, she got role models right inside the family. She doesn't have to look outside the family to see somebody that she needs to emulate, because we have them right here in our family. Everybody welcome Dr. Naila Thompson. Woo -hoo! She was two years younger than me, and she actually passed away from complications of type 1 diabetes and a seizure disorder in 2002 at the age of 24. My sister was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 12, and for me, watching her struggle with two such debilitating diseases was my motivation for becoming a physician, so that I could help others with diabetes live a healthy life as possible, instead of accepting their disease as a curse and just giving up and saying, oh, I have diabetes, and now I have diabetes. So after finishing at University of San Diego, I had the opportunity to play for two seasons on a professional exhibition team before being accepted and beginning medical school. And as Al said, it was a very difficult decision between going to play in the WNBA and going to medical school, but we often have to make difficult decisions and just try to think you know, long term what the best decision is when you're making those decisions. So I went to medical school in Kansas City, Missouri, and it was during my third year of medical school when Halima passed away. And that was actually a crossroads for me. On one hand, I really wanted to give up because I just couldn't understand why that had happened. My younger sister had just gone. And I had to make a decision to keep going. And that for my sister, I would dedicate the rest of my life to helping those with diabetes live the healthiest life possible despite their disease. So my medical career is dedicated to my sister, who despite all her suffering, was the most brave person I know. And despite all her pain, if you knew her, you would say she had the most beautiful smile that her life over. So my medical career, I started here at Highland Hospital in Oakland, and we serve the underserved and uninsured populations there. And often because of lack of access to care, um, I began to see many sicknesses and complications that could have been prevented with education and just care. And so I began to really get disgusted by the number of young people I saw dying of heart attacks or strokes or kidney diseases, cancer, all these things that we could have prevented. And so at that time, I decided I was going to focus my efforts not only on clinical care, but on educating populations about how they could prevent these diseases and live a healthy life. So at that time, I decided to go train some more as my godson. Jamal was my godson. He was just teasing me of all the training I've done. But so here's my training a little further, and I went to New York City, and I did a preventive medicine fellowship at the New York City Department of Health and I did a Master of Public Health at Columbia University. So I've been in school a long time. I'm not in school anymore, but I went to school for a long time. But for me, it was important to continue until I found a place where I wanted to be doing something that I wanted to do because initially when I was just seeing those sick people and kind of treating them and putting a Band-Aid on their problems, I was not happy. So now, I work at Kaiser in Oakland, so I'm back home. I live in San Francisco. <laughs> I'm a primary care physician at Kaiser, and I also have the opportunity, it's hot in here, I'm sorry. I also have the opportunity to um, do some clinical research for Kaiser, and I work on chronic disease prevention, and identifying and eliminating disparities. Disparities are differences between uh, different cultures. So I'm looking at why are there differences in the African American population with high blood pressure strokes, and then what things we can do before this happens culturally or educating them to prevent these things from happening. So I'm really happy to be able to do that. Kaiser puts a lot of money to the, into that. And so 
I'm working on the research and we're working on programs to reduce these disparities, focus on prevention, and improve the quality of care we provide our patients. So that's my little story.